What's going on, you guys? guys? It's Logan, and it's like 4 a.m. where I'm at on Central Time Zone. Final Direct Club released numbers earlier today. I was work earlier, so I've looked over the numbers. I've listened to the conference call twice, and I've taken quite a bit of notes recapping that. So I'm gonna go over the numbers that they released and uh, some of the reasons why the numbers were bad, because they were bad, <laughs> you know. There's not a whole lot of debating that, and is this something that is just short term for Small Direct Club, or is it something that's more longer term? Small Direct Club has either met or exceeded earnings guidance in the previous five quarters before missing this one. They had $174 million in total revenues Q2 2021. This is up 62% year over year. However, Q2 2020 was the heart of COVID, and the revenues were really low from COVID then. Uh, because of the shutdown. If we look at Q over Q, Small Direct Club total revenues decreased from 199 million in Q1 down 13% Q1 to Q2 in 2021. This is shocking, especially to investors, because Small Direct Club is supposed to be growing 5 to 7% each quarter and 20 to 30% year over year. They went down over 10%, which is why the stock got hit massively today. They reported a net loss of $55 million in Q2 2021. This is where Small Direct Club has floated for the last year or so. Small Direct Club is edging towards profitability net profitability they're pretty close they're like almost a break even right and can really become profitable wherever they like by cutting down on marketing and through less overall expansion because expansion expensive you have to get into a different market you have to make your brand name known you have to do a lot of advertising things of that nature a lot of that okay most important right now is top line growth with expansion with better and better profit margins over time which they plan to do just EBITDA EBITDA is expenses before interest taxes depreciation and amortization it's $22 million. Um, just DPS is a loss of 14 cents. Like I said, they're not really worried about being profitable yet. That will come with time. Unique alliance shipments were only 90,000 and they didn't really draw any comparison from Q1, which is weird. I was like, hmm. So I had to go back to the last earnings a small direct club in Q1 2021 to find it, it went down. <laughs> so I look back and small direct club Q1 2021 shipped 106,000 aligners. So the total amount of aligners shipped is down 15% quarter over quarter. Yikes. And this explains why total revenues have fallen. They can say, oh, the cyber attack did this. They can say, which it may have been a factor of that. You know, they can say COVID, COVID, you know, but at the end of the day, they want to be shipping more liner orders, more and more liner orders, okay? COVID did play a role, like I said before. Cruise lines and the airline company's revenues are still terrible right now. I tend to group Smile Direct Club into the recovery stock group because the whole point, needing a liners, especially for minor cases, if you get to more moderate to major teeth problems, you're gonna need it fixed because it's uncomfortable, because it's not practical by the anatomical structure of your mouth. But like minimal crooked teeth, stuff like that is mostly because people wanna look good in front of others and wanna be more presentable and stuff like that. And people aren't out and about moving, traveling, out for work if they're cooped up in the house. In Zoom meetings, they're, they're, they're less likely to buy clear liners. So this is straight from CEO David Katzman. We have a singular focus on maximizing our global opportunity and extending our, te our leading telehealth platform for orthodontia through a persistent emphasis on customer service, improving customer perception around credibility, driving positive sentiment with our challenger campaign and investing in innovation. And I'll go into what the challenger campaign is later. 75% of Smile Direct Club's total adjustable market is international. It's international. They're only about 16% penetrated into their entire international footprint. And COVID, of course, COVID is a lot worse in other parts of the world that aren't the United States, Canada. It's unfair to compare Smile Direct Club performance and their growth, the COVID effect we see in the United States. We got to look elsewhere. We got to look international, how COVID is rapidly expanding and what the restrictions are and effects are international to understand why Smile Direct Club's having trouble growing because Smile Direct Club main focus and main growth vector now is international. That's only fair. Smile Direct Club Chief Financial Officer Kyle Wells added the short-term headwinds from residual impacts of the April cyber attack. So April cyber attack, if you don't know much about that, I can leave that in the thumbnail or you can go to my page to look at that. The lasting economic effects from COVID on our target demographic and slower scaling of some new international markets, like I said before. Kyle Wells think this headwinds with COVID and with Cyber attack are transitory and will pass in just our short term, short term hurdle. Small Direct Club had a really good Q1 to where they did $199 million and we thought they were back to normal, but then there was a resurgence of COVID cases in Q2 2021, which is why that and the cyber attack is why I think 
Fight Art Club. Number of alarms ordered have fallen substantially core over quarter. However, this is something I will watch long term because you can't blame COVID forever. No, you can't. Smart Art Club has been spending heavy on marketing and advised they plan to spend quite a bit for expansion into Europe. That is good. That should not affect total revenues. Smart Art Club says a difficult to replicate business model. I would have to agree because companies would need to spend in excess money in purchasing a liner making technology. Also, they would need to come up with the most optimal chemicals and compounds to put together in order to make these aligners to put into the machines. The aligners must be comfortable, effective, and cheap. Smart Direct Club has had high customer satisfaction results. Smart Direct Club and Align are the two big dogs in the aligner space as we know. Smart Direct Club management said there are three ways that customers research. It is online, dentists, referral by dentists, and then bringing their name up and asking a friend, which is all about the customer experience. Smile Direct Club is continuing to work with dentists to partner with dentists. This will bring referrals to Smile Direct Club. Smile Direct Club has traditionally been known as DTC or, or a direct-to-consumer brand, which it is, but it's also getting into partnering with dentists to where, say Smile Direct Club comes across somebody with like a major mouth occlusion case or they need oral surgery, they'll make certain partnerships with dentists and oral surgeons. And if they can't handle a case because it's too severe, they will refer them to the dentist. And likewise, if the dentist doesn't feel like oral surgery or actual dentist work is needed for it, or full embraces, they will refer client to Smile Direct Club. Greater partner network adoption. The company has a professional network of dental partners with 1,800 locations, and 500 of them are already active or pending training. Smile Direct Club plans to invest significantly in partner network in the second half of this year. For the year ended December 31st, 2021, the company expects total revenues to be in the range of $750 million to $800 million. Smile Direct Club can see revenue fluctuation month over month or quarter over quarter because sales are seasonal. Historically, Smile Direct Club has seen higher sales in Q4 than in, in other quarters, okay? If Smile Direct Club can pull off $800 million total revenue, that's up from $656 million last year, year over year, in 2020, and from $750 million in 2019. 2019 was before COVID wrecked Smile Direct Club's business model. If you look at Smile Direct Club's growth before COVID, they were growing like 60, 67% per year. And the growth's not going to be that high anymore because they're a larger company, the law of large numbers, right? But I don't see why they couldn't go 20, 30% still. It's just COVID threw a wrench. It threw a hell of a wrench into their, um, in their business. Gross margin as a percentage of total revenue is expected to be in the mid 70s range through the second half of 2021. That's, that's a solid, solid margin. Over time, it could probably creep up to the low 80s. It'd be awesome. Regarding smile shops, the smile shops' primary function are fulfillment centers instead of sources of demand generation. As the quarter end, the company has 135 permanent smile shops with 150 pop-up shops. Okay, so basically, smile shops is like a quasi-dentist office where dentists are there and where other trained professionals are there to assist com uh, to assist customers who want a physical appearance. So it's just complementary of the direct to consumer business for, com for customers who want to actually see somebody. And they had 150 pop-up shops, which is basically like they set up shop outside or in like a building to where they don't have all the permanent overhead costs, but they can still help customers out at different locations um, for that day or for that week or however long they're there. Revenue from the rest of the world markets defined as markets outside the US and Canada came in approximately 16%, like I said before, long term be say 5%. Smile Direct Club retains approximately $377 million of cash on the balance sheet. That's excellent. <clears throat> Compared to the $2.7 billion market cap right now, they're over 10% of their total market cap is cash. Quote, looking to move upstream with customer demographics, looking to target what their customers, Smile Direct Club is. So, Smile Direct Club has expanded their footprint on what I call value customers. So, customers looking for a deal for liners, maybe in a lower wealth demographic. And now, Smile Direct Club wants to target more of their competition, which is aligns target audience of wealthier customers. Smile Direct Club can do this. That will help the amount of people that they can target, especially in markets that already built out by them like Canada and the United States. Smart Art Club is relaunching in the United Kingdom and Australia. Top funnel weakness and mid funnel conversion accounted for 25 million of quarters missed. Top funnel means everything prior to requesting a kit or a scan. Mid funnel means requesting kit or scan to getting the kit or returning the kit or failing to show up for the scan. Somewhere in that process, Smart Art Club lost a lot of customers in that particular quarter. I think that was primarily due to the cyber attack, which caused a significant backlog in orders for Smart Art Club and it probably caused a lot more issues, possibly getting orders mixed up and whatnot. Uh, it was not good for these guys. <laughs>
but they said the cyber attack should not affect them going into the next quarter. Ancillary products, which is basically any product that is sold that's not in a liner, whether it be teeth whitening, whether it be recurring revenue from their more permanent containers that you have to order every six months to keep your teeth in line, that's recurring revenue. I like that made up 20 million out of their 174 million dollars in total revenue. Smile Pay accounted for 61 percent of total orders, and their delinquency rates are flat. And basically, the delinquency rate is the rate at which people who have a payment plan with Smile Direct Club don't pay it back. So, so their delinquency rate is not going up. That's something that like a risk factor even before COVID, with them expanding into other markets, especially countries that don't have as much cash per person as the United States or Canada does. You want to sell lives, but you want to have your customers be able to to pay it back over time. So delinquency rates are big to watch for whenever we look for smaller club expansion. $96 million spent in marketing this quarter. Uh, that's a lot. That's over 50% of the total money they made. The goal is to spend about 40 to 45% on, um, on marketing Smile Direct Club long term, that's the goal. Smile Direct Club is a vertically integrated business, meaning almost everything from making the product to shipping it is in-house. This is good for profit margins as it helps Smile Direct Club to minimize operating expenses. Vertically integrated. Smile Direct Club is going to attack Invisalign's market. Smile Direct Club could raise line prices by $500 per liner and still have a much cheaper product than a line does. Smile Direct Club is going into mild and moderate cases of mild occlusions. Like I touched on earlier, this is big because it gives Smile Direct Club a larger target market and more customers they could potentially help and serve and that's good for uh, revenues obviously. For newer markets, the first six to nine months, Smile Direct Club knows it's not gonna be profitable. They're gonna have to market, have to build a brand. So they're gonna overspend on what they make in those markets, they're gonna use 80 to 100% of the net profits from those new markets and uh, put them back into marketing to build their name in those new markets. For Contacts only, for Contacts, Smile Direct Club five years ago only had $20 million in revenue. And now they're doing $174 million per quarter. That's like, it's almost a 10X in revenue. So why would I not think they can't 2X, 3X, 4X the revenues in the next five, 10 years, you know what I mean? As far as marketing goes, quarter over quarter cost per lead in marketing on social media has gone up 100%. Smile Direct Club wants to transition to more general marketing on social media as opposed to actual lead and move moving to television some as well. Hopefully by television, they mean more Netflix and Sling and not cable because cable is outdated. Smile Direct Club has a larger social media presence than Line does with more Facebook and Instagram followers. Companies like Byte or Candid are not real competition for Smile Direct Club right now. Who knows short term what will happen with COVID. Revenues might be affected. Expansion might be slow like it has been. It all comes down to can Smile Direct Club effectively expand long term their top line growth. I think Smile Direct Club will continue to make their product better and better. Smile Direct Club will likely come out with other products in the future as well. Smile Direct Club has a very unique business model in offering a direct to consumer approach as opposed to a lines straight through the dentist. Smile Direct Club's getting more and more referrals from dentists. I'll monitor Smile Direct Club very closely. It is by 8% of my portfolio right now. Uh, the lower Smile Direct Club goes, the more I'll nibble. I do not want to make Smile Direct Club too large a position in my portfolio. I cannot see Smile Direct Club not forexing from here in the coming years. I can't see them being under a $10 billion market cap. I think Smile Direct Club is going to be fine once all this COVID mess has subsided. Worldwide though, not just here in the United States. Worldwide. And who knows how long that'll take. I appreciate y'all tuning into the video. I do videos on Tattoo Chef, Smile Direct Club, some big digital, some on football TV, stuff like that. But I've been really busy with my own job. I started my own security officer business, stuff like that a few months ago, and I've been going harder than that. If y'all appreciate the video, it's gonna take me forever to edit because it's a long video. I talked a lot. Like the video for me. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do that then. And let me know what you think about Smile Direct Club long term where you, where you see it's going in the comment section for me y'all have an excellent day see y'all on the next one yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. i'm like oj uh -huh. with the glove uh -huh. i'm like twin next uh -huh. with the dub